Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be unboxing a mysterious and slightly quirky smartphone. This is the Simple Phone, a degoogled blower similar to the Marina Phone which I recently checked out here on the channel for those of us who like our privacy. And not necessarily just because we're thoroughly and confusingly addicted to dubious stepsister content on certain popular online sites. And the Simple Phone from Simple Mobile Tools will cost you 349 euros. It is available in Europe only at this precise moment, but the plans are to bring it to the UK, the US and other regions imminently. So that's more than enough banging on. Let's whip it on out of the box, take you on a full tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first of all, I'm absolutely loving the dark and mysterious box. It's so black, I think I can see my soul in there. Although there is a lovely sparkly sticker here on the edge, just in case you're not exactly sure what it is you've bought. Whoops. All right, so what does the black box hold? Well, you've got yourself one very shiny, simple phone that's as black as the box. A two-pin adapter, as it is a European model. USB Type-C cable, nice. Got a screen protector and some wipes chucked in the box as well, although the simple phone does come with a pre-installed screen protector already. And you've also got yourself a sort of four leather style case for the simple phone as well, which feels really nice, nice soft touch finish. And of course, a quick start guide, whoop whoop. And that's your lot, so overall, pretty good package. So let's begin with design, and I'm getting some serious deja vu chills from the simple phone because it is essentially an identity kit handset, just like the Merino one. In fact, it is pretty much identical to the Merino one right down to the glossy arse end and that camera bump. Don't expect a rainbow selection of colors. It looks like you can grab the simple phone in black and that's your lot. And as you can probably make out there, already starting to get some nice greasy prints on that back end, even though I swear my hands are not that oily. These phones are giving me a serious complex. And the simple phone is a 6.53 inch, so not exactly absolutely enormous compared with some Android smartphones, although you do get a bit of fat lip action down below. And just like that Marina one, you do have an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor slapped over here on the left edge rather than the right, which is more traditional, but you do get a separate power button on that right edge as well. So let's get the simple phone all set up, then we can check out exactly what this privacy-focused smartphone is all about. So boot up the simple phone and you're presented with Simple OS, which uses Micro-G to strip out the core Google services and cut out the tracking. Although apparently, according to the Simple Phone documentation, some metadata will still reach those Google servers, so you're not completely cut off from the G-Man. It is worth pointing out that SimpleOS is based on older Android 11, so not as fresh and up-to-date as a lot of more modern Android smartphones. However, Simple Mobile Tools has promised up to three years of security updates to keep you protected. And also, the bootloader comes locked by default, but apparently you can unlock it and then also relock it if you so desire. And Simple certainly seems to be an apt name for this OS. You naturally don't get the Google Discover feed. You do at least get an app store, which is something the Merino One phone did lack. And drag down that notifications bar from anywhere and you've got a small number of shortcuts and toggles. And as usual, you can customize the UI as well with your own wallpapers and widgets. Although you are limited in the widget front because again, there's not that standard Google stuff there. And naturally, when you jump on into that app tray, you won't find the likes of Gmail or Google Chrome. You've got a bunch of custom apps slapped on here, a couple dozen in total with their internet privileges denied, unlike regular Android apps. This includes all the main tools you'll need to get started, including good old file management, a bit of calculator action, Whoa. got a music player, voice recorder, even a little drawing tool so you can get all creative or not. Instead of the usual Google Gmail, what you've got here is Fair Email. It's got to grant a handful of permissions and then you're ready to set up your email account. This includes a wizard to help you get all set up in various tutorials and stuff if you need a bit of extra help. And you've got full control over the syncing settings, pretty much everything you could possibly expect. As for your web browser, well, the Chrome replacement here is Bromite. Apparently a bit of Chromium, plus ad blocking and privacy enhancements. Not too sure about the take back your browser mantra though, it's a bit too close to the take back your country, rah, rah, rah crowd. And of course, like the email app, you will have to grant this special access to the internet, otherwise it's not gonna work too well. And first port of call for me, as always, is wall.alphacoders.com to get some geeky anime backgrounds on the go. There we go, much better. Now the settings menu on the simple phone it looks basically like your standard Android effort with a few little changes here and there. If you dive on into the security section, you're able to set up the likes of the fingerprint sensor and the face unlock. And the fingerprint sensor is certainly not the most responsive I've ever used, but it seems to get there in the end. 
It's only a small selection of settings in the privacy menu, mostly because a lot of the privacy stuff is baked in, but you can, for instance, set the individual permissions for all of your apps. And you've also got a separate settings for micro G. This includes a self check service as well, which allows you to play around with all kinds of different settings. You can see exactly which packages are installed and also mess around with some more permissions. And from here, you can also add in a Google account if you want to, although that kind of absolutely smashes the whole point of having a simple phone, surely. If you get bored of just messing around with the calculator and the flashlight and you want to download some fresh apps, well, there's no Google Play Store, but what you get instead is F-Droid which once again, of course, requires a bit of internet access. Now, f -Droid is, of course, very different from Google's Play Store. It'll help you track down more privacy-focused versions of regular Android apps. Sobriety, that does not sound up my street at all. The number of available apps on here is very limited compared with the Google Play Store. We're talking a few thousand on here as opposed to millions. And if you are a gamer, don't expect the likes of Call of Duty and Genshin Impact on here, but they do have CODs with cats. Honestly, who needs PUBG when you've got CODs with cats? Got some absolute classics on here, the likes of VLC, I haven't used that in a little while. And if you do decide that you want to grab some extra apps on the side that you can't find on F-Droid, where you can just download APK files from a trusted source as usual. As for the rest of the specs, well, it is evident that this is identical hardware again to that Merino one, because, for instance, you've got the same 128 gigs of storage. And it can be expanded via micro SD using the second SIM slot. And that 6.53 inch display is basic LCD tech as well, not OLED like quite a few rivals at this sort of price point, including the OnePlus Nord CE2. It is reasonably crisp with its Full HD plus resolution, although it does top off at 60 hertz, as you'll see. If you go into the display, there's no refresh rate option in here. And you've also got a basic mono speaker setup as well, just mounted down here on the bottom end and kind of tinny output as well. You've got Wi-Fi 5 support for internet fun times, but you can also upgrade to SIM support thanks to that MediaTek 3080 chipset with its built-in modem. And just like the Marina one, it is powered by the MediaTek Helio G60 as well, quite a basic chipset, quite an old one these days. And that's backed by just 4 gigs of RAM, although touch about everything seems to run fine, mostly because you've got quite a basic app setup here. If you jump on into the settings and scroll all the way down, you'll see there is a Dura Speed option if things are starting to get a bit slow for some of your favorite apps. This just basically restricts the background privileges of any apps that you don't prioritize. And another drawback of that old Helio G60 chipset is there's no 5G support here on the simple phone as well, so keeping it very simple indeed. As for the battery, well, you'll never guess what. The same capacity as that Marina one again, 4,500 mAh. And from the current trickle, I'd say you'd probably get around five to six hours of mixed use from that full charge. And hey, look, you get identical camera tech to the Marina one as well, headed up by a 48 megapixel primary sensor. Very simple, straightforward camera app here. You got your shutter button, you can turn on the flash, change the aspect ratio. That's pretty much it. Even those camera settings are as basic as you like. You can also shoot a tasty bit of Full HD video footage if you so desire. And then if we swap to the front face and selfie camera, it's a 25 megapixel effort. And it's currently making me look a lot pinker than I am in real life. I certainly don't have to bugger off to Benidorm next summer. I can just take a snap of this instead. Woof, definitely a keeper. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a nutshell is the de Googleified Simple Phone, as I say, available in Europe right now for 349 euros, coming to the likes of the UK and the US soon. So are you tempted? It'd be very interesting to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.